Houston has officially made it to August without a single heat advisory, a rare feat. So how does that compare to our last few summers? Joining us now to put it all in perspective is Houston Chronicle meteorologist Justin Ballard, who is armed with the stats on why the heat hasn't been as severe as in years past. Welcome back, I Justin. I am armed with the stats and a little bit of the trauma still from 2023. Because <laughs> you got here in 2023, mm -hmm. our hottest summer on record, by the way. And so that was kind of your standard of what a Houston <laughs> summer is, and that was very extreme. And every summer since, I've been pleasantly surprised. This <laughs> summer especially, we've only had one heat advisory, and that wasn't technically issued in Houston proper. Right. That was actually to the north and west, Washington, Brenham County, or Washington County in with Brenham and, and Brazos County as well, getting in on that fun. So and it, it technically wasn't it. even in the summer months. It was no. back in May. <laughs> Mid-May. <at laughs> right. That, yeah. Okay, so tell us more about this remarkably mild summer we've been having. You know, temperatures have been warm. There's no doubt about it. And sure. we've had mint to upper 90s for the better part of, well, since June 1st. So, I mean, it's not like it's been outrageously hot though, right? When you're talking about heat advisories, you're talking about it feels like temperatures or heat index values of 105 and higher for a prolonged period of time. We've not had that for for now yet. Yeah. You know, we've had one, as I said, from the National Weather Service. They issued one back in mid-May uh, to the north and west of Houston, but technically Harris County has not seen their first heat advisory of 2025. Compare that to 2023, for instance, we had 32. At this point in the year, wow. we had 12 in 2023, so we, we had a, a lot more to get through. August before, was on blast, wasn't it? <laughs> before, before it started cooling down that year, but it's just a very stark comparison and uh, to our hottest year on record in Houston, which was 2023. And, you know, if I went even further back, 2011 didn't have very many heat advisories either, certainly compared to 2023, which I was surprised about. But you just mentioned a good point off, off, off camera. Yeah, that's because 2011, while it was our second hottest summer, was incredibly dry. We had a mm -hmm. terrible drought, so we didn't get the humidity right. to boost the heat index up quite a bit. Which and just makes sense. Looking at the graphic there over the last 10 years, it kind of looks like, at least in the last decade, about 10 to 15 mm -hmm. heat advisories is pretty common yeah. per year. Uh, absolutely. And now, keep in mind, we haven't seen our first heat advisory yet in Houston, but August is typically our hottest Notorious. month. So what's, <laughs> been the, the what's been the saving grace? How, why are we so much milder? This feels very appropriate because, you know, I was racing those storms this morning trying to get in here before <laughs> the bottom dropped out. And it really has to do with the fact that we've had a lot of storms, we've had a lot of cloud cover, and we've also had some help from outflow boundaries mm -hmm. that, you know, I saw a beautiful outflow boundary on radar Saturday night. Yeah. And then this morning provided a perfect example. So let's talk about the science behind outflow boundaries. This is, again, a radar snapshot from earlier this morning, so not live radar. You see that thin green band stretching from just west of Mount Bellevue all the way towards Pearland, down towards the south. That is an airflow boundary. That's rain-cooled air that kind of rushes out. Ahead of that warm, humid air, you certainly felt it, you know, right before, you know, that storm came in in League City and Dickinson. And then to the west of that outflow boundary, to the north of that outflow boundary, rain, cool, uh, cooler. Mm -hmm. Yeah, <laughs> uh, the relatively. Temp the relatively, the temperature dropped on my way in a solid 10 degrees yeah, from I'll take it. <laughs> where, I, where I left to where I, I got. So a 10 degree temperature drop in about five or six miles. That's impressive. And some folks are saying, you know, we, do, we talk about outflow boundaries from time to time. We're like, I've never heard of an outflow boundary. Well, I guarantee you've seen one yes. because that's the shelf cloud. When you see a shelf cloud, that long cloud across the sky that kind of hangs low, that's the leading edge of that rain cool there. And that push of wind that you get. I mean, I and I mentioned this to you yeah. as I was coming in, dust everywhere on, uh, you know, on my drive into, into the station because of all of that wind that was kind of coming in from that flow. And it kind of surprised me that you reported so much dust. I got reports elsewhere because mm -hmm. of just how much rain we've had to wash the right. dust away over the last few Certainly weeks. Certainly not. A lot of construction, too, I guess. Yeah, that's that's, that's, that's probably a big part of it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so uh, while it's been mild so far, mm -hmm. why is this not a guarantee when it comes to the month of August? Well... August is notoriously <laughs> hot. So as we mentioned, you know, the average high for August is 96 through the 12th. So okay. once we get to the 12th and beyond, it's not, you know, like it's going to get cool anytime fast, but temperatures slowly start to stair step their way down. Now we've also had some cloud cover that's been also kind of helping us so far. Hopefully we can keep this pattern going. Cloud cover in June, 53%. This is from Bush Intercontinental Airport. Cloud cover in July, about 60%. So you average them on the, on the border there of that 55 to 60% in June and July. Houston rainfall for June fell below normal 
just a hair, only by about three quarters of, a, of an inch. July was above normal, so we have had a very wet summer, kind of, you know, all things compared, certainly to 2023 when we were dealing with heat, drought, you know, yeah. that heat dome effect. Justin, that's all the time we have for today, but I'd like to keep this trend going as long yes, as it doesn't involve crossed. hurricanes uh, right. in August or September. <laughs> Thanks so much for joining us today. Thank you.